Have you ever sent money to someone and wished you could tell them exactly what to do with it? A programmable token transfer is basically that. And in this video, I'll show you how programmable token transfers, or PTTs, work and give you some ideas of what you can do with them. Regular token bridges move tokens from one blockchain to another. The ability to move assets from one place to another is great, but these bridges miss out on a key ability, sending tokens and data. Programmable token transfers using CCIP do just that. They let you send your tokens and instructions for using them in one transaction. Think of it like Amazon delivering a package with simply instructions included. The value and the message travel together. Let's quickly dive into what this looks like in a Solidity contract and see how it works. So we're gonna start here where I love to start with the Chainlink developer documentation. It's at docs.chain.link. And for this tutorial, we're gonna to go to the CCIP documentation. From here, we're going to go to guides and then transfer tokens with data. Now, the link directly to this will be in the description below, but something important to know is that I have modified the contract in this example just a little bit for illustrative purposes. I think it'll make things a lot clearer for you, seeing how we can send data and tokens together and how that can be so powerful. So in this example, it's got some setup. I'm not going to go through all of this. I'll let you do that just to respect your time. You can read through this. Our docs team has done a fantastic job of documenting everything, explaining everything in this contract as well, and all the different pieces and steps that we need. You can see this contract is, is a big contract. It's very powerful. It's really cool because it allows you to both send and receive tokens and data using the same contract. So you deploy this contract on both the source chain and the destination chain. Same contract, two chains. It's great, it's really powerful. All the steps here, are explained and how to do it. Uh, if you want to change the networks that you're on from Ethereum Sepolia uh, to something else, you can do that as well. You just need to go to the CCIP directory and then look up the different pieces. So if we want to take a look at what that looks like here, we can go to the directory, test nets. In this example, I'm using base Sepolia and Arbitrum Sepolia. Here you can see we have all the information, the router, chain selector. We even have the tokens that we'll be sending CCIP B &M. All right, so we have all this information that we need. The docs do a great job of explaining how to do everything, how to deploy everything, how to transfer and receive tokens. We're gonna to use Link just like this example here. So let's take a look at the code and see what we've got going on here. So again, I just took that contract straight from our documentation, did a few things to it. The first thing that I did is I implemented this other contract within it called Swapper Token. It's just a basic ERC-20 token. It does nothing special. Uh, it's probably, honestly, a little bit insecure because, hey, anybody can mint this token, right? This is, again, just for illustrative purposes. I threw some warnings in here that says, you know, hey, anyone can mint this token. So be aware of that. You probably want to put some sort of access control in front of it. But just for the simplicity and ease of use, it is what it is. It's super simple. So we have our basic constructor here. We got our ERC-20 token. We've got our basic mint function here. Super simple. All right, so what else did I add to this? Well, the other thing that I did is down here towards the bottom of this contract, uh, we've modified the send message pay and link. The piece that's new really is this piece right here. What this does is this allows you to encode a message. It's not just gonna be the text. In the original source for this, we're just sending the text with our tokens. And this one, we're gonna send a recipient wallet as well. Uh, we encode the address before the text because addresses are a fixed length. So given that they're a fixed length, we can then decode it easily on the receiving side. And we'll see what that looks like here in just a minute. So we've got this as well. We've got our encoded message that we'll send where we add a recipient wallet. Why do we add that recipient wallet? What I'm doing here is I'm modifying this a little bit so that it takes the BNM tokens and the text. And when it receives that text, uh, we can look here at the CCIP receive code. We can see here we decode this, but what we do is we look and see if the message text was swap them. If it's swap them, then we're gonna go ahead and mint that swapper token. If it's not swap them, we'll just give the recipient the value of the token that they sent in. So in our case, it's gonna be BNM tokens, right? This is really powerful. This is what programmable token transfers can do. You can send data and the token, and when you actually get that on the receiving chain, you can do something with it in that same transaction. And that is really powerful because you as the user know, hey, I send this information from one chain to another and I know what's going to happen with my tokens and my data. 
That's really powerful. So here we're taking the information in. I mentioned that we were going to decode this, right? So we have our data that comes across with CCIP. We need to decode it here. And the reason that we want to put address first is because address is a fixed length. So it's really easy to decode something like an address because, hey, when we're decoding, we know how many bytes that is. If we'd put the string first, things can get really complicated because where does the string stop and the address begin? We can't really look from the backside as easily as we can the front side and say, hey, first we've got an address and then the rest of this stuff, that's our string. So we decode that into recipient and our text. And then we check the text, right, to see if it is swap them and double checking that we sent the BNM token. We only want this to work for the BNM token. And if it is, cool, we'll go ahead and mint our swapper token. If it's not, again, we'll send along the token to the user. So it's pretty simple. <laughs> the changes that we made, this contract though, whew, like I said, it's a pretty big contract. It's pretty robust. It's a really powerful contract. And if you want to understand how all of this works, again, go into the documentation. It explains everything step by step. It explains all the code. It talks you through each piece. The comments in this contract are also fantastic. Again, I just gotta give a shout out to our docs team because man, they make my job easy by giving us such good docs. So what does this look like if we wanted to use this? Let's check it out. I've got everything deployed. Like I mentioned, I'm on Arbitrum's Polia and base to Polia. I'm going from base to Arbitrum. So I've filled everything in here. I've got my destination chain selector, the receiver contract. This is the same contract deployed on Arbitrum. Uh, I've got my text, swap them. Got my token. This is going to be that BNM token. Uh, the amount of the BNM token that I want to send, I think this is like 0 .001. Uh, and then the recipient wallet, which is, is my address on the destination chain. Cool. We've got it all set up, ready to go. A uh, couple of things just to look at real quick. We're on base Sepolia making things easy. You can see here, I've got BNM tokens in here, um, ready to go. I've also funded this contract with link tokens so it can pay in link. Again, that's in the documentation if you go through and read through all the steps there. So I'll go ahead and click transact and I'll confirm this. Now, this may take a moment. So while we're waiting for that, I want to show you real quick. We can see here that I have my tokens. I have 0 0.001 swap tokens because I did this already once just to make sure it worked the first time. Hopefully it works the second time. Uh, and so we've got those swap tokens already. We can check and make sure this goes up once our transaction is complete. How do we check out our transaction? Back over here in Remix, we've got our transaction here. If we open this up, we can see our transaction hash. We'll copy this and we'll head on over to ccip.chain.link and we'll paste in that transaction hash right here and take a look at it. Cool, we can see that it's working, right? It's thinking, it's going from base Sepolia, like I mentioned, to Arbitrum Sepolia, and it looks like it's gonna take 30 minutes. This has to do with finality. We need to wait for base Sepolia to reach finality before we send anything over to Arbitrum Sepolia. Boom, we've got our success already. Let's zoom in just a little bit so we can see what's going on here. There's a couple things to look at on this page. First, we can see our transaction hash. That's what we used to go from our transaction to the CCIP Explorer. We can see it's coming from base to Arbitrum. Our status is now success. So we sent our tokens, our 0.001 BNM tokens. And if you remember, we're gonna swap those to the Swapum token because in our data here, we sent the text Swapum as well as the address for the receiver of those tokens. So we've got our success here. So we take a look at my wallet now and we take a look at the Arbitrum Sepolia network. We can see we have 0 0.002 swap tokens. So our transaction has gone from base Sepolia with a BNM token to our receiver contract on Arbitrum Sepolia. We sent some tokens and some data that swap them text along for the ride. When it got there, we used our programmable token transfer to swap those BNM tokens into our swap and tokens. Now again, remember this contract is just for illustrative purposes, but it starts to show you the power of programmable token transfers and what you can do with them. Now that you have an idea of what programmable token transfers do, what do they actually unlock? Well, they can unlock things like swapping tokens across different blockchains in one step, staking directly from one chain to another, making cross-chain payments and purchases at the same time, and connecting DeFi protocols across multiple chains. The blockchain industry is already using this tech. Cross-chain swaps like XSwap, ChainSwap, 
Transporter, they use it, staking solutions like Lido, Diva, and Frax, and more are using it, and even major banks like ANZ are using programmable token transfers for cross-border payments and asset trading. So programmable token transfers are the secret sauce for making blockchain networks work together. If you want to learn more, check out the Chainlink Developer Hub at dev.chain.link. And make sure you like and subscribe for more explainers like this one.